thanks everyone for tuning in for another episode of The Listful Soul, A Devotion to Mary. So today marks two months since the release of my first episode. And to do something a little different, I thought, why not um, release an out of the schedule of episode? And I think what makes this day even special is the fact that we celebrate the feast of one of Mary's titles, Our Lady of Fatima. And so I thought, I mean, what a perfect day uh, for me to celebrate not only two months of my podcast, but as well as celebrating the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. So two months, wow, I mean, I never thought that I would ever be in this place where um, I actually go ahead with, uh, you know, with this podcast, um, uh, like I mentioned in, 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 I think, my first episode where I've always wanted to uh, do something like this, but I never really got around to it for various reasons, one being the fact that, um, you know, it it felt very awkward when you think about it, um, when you're here sitting and talking to yourself. But you know what? Um, I think what really pushed me to, to do this is um, the growth that I have seen within myself in my faith and the experiences that I have had because of my faith. And that is... One of the biggest reasons why I decided to go ahead with this because it is something that I did want to share with with all of you. Um, What I wanted to share and and really give people the hope that I think many of us need. And especially now, you know, times are really difficult. Um, There's so much of darkness around us, a lot of lives that we're losing. A lot of sadness that a lot of us are going through. And in that sadness and in that darkness, I feel, and I know that there is that light, and that light is through Christ. And that is what I want to share with whomever is listening. That there is hope, that there is that light at the end of the tunnel, and that light and that hope is in Jesus. And one of the quickest and one of the safest and one of the surest ways of getting to Jesus is through his mother. And that's Mama Mary. And so with my experiences with Mama Mary is where I wanted to share with you the magnificence of who she is. And how she changed the lives of so many people. And that's why I really took up took up that topic of speaking about the various titles that were given to Mary because every title had a significance, every title had a meaning toward it and a reasoning toward it. And the more you hear about it, the more it draws you closer to her in ways that you can't even imagine and in ways that you wouldn't even predict or even know what happened. She just makes a difference in your lives. And during, you know, these these past two months where I've come to learn even more about her. I mean, to be honest, I, I knew very little about Mama Mary. And even until the point where I thought, okay, I would do this podcast and I would revolve this season around Mama Mary. To be very honest, I, I didn't really know much. But it's been through these past two months where I have personally grown even more closer to her. Through the stories that I have read in understanding the various titles and in understanding what her purpose was and why those titles became so significant. So one thing that that I really want to ask all of you listening out there. Some of you follow me on Facebook, some of you follow me on Instagram, 
And if you haven't, well, go ahead and do so. Because I put up, um, you know, different uh, verses. I put up different um, sayings by people who've, you know, said things about, about Mama Mary. Um, even in, in my episodes where I have guest speakers, sometimes we talk about things that, that I quote and I put there. And sometimes there are days where we need those words of encouragement. So if you haven't started following me on Facebook or Instagram, go ahead and do so. And so what I would really like from each one of you that is listening out there, just to show me that support as well. I'm going to put up an image, all right? And I want you guys to just comment on something that really stood out to you in these past five episodes. I guess, what would be your favorite episode? Um, what was the one thing that you really took away uh, from these episodes? And how has listening to these episodes made a difference? even in the smallest of ways in your life. So if you could, you know, put that across, I think that will not only help me, but it will help others who, you know, um, who are in the group or who are following. And, you know, that, that that's your way to contribute toward bringing someone closer to Mary by really showing them that Mary can make a difference even in the simplest of a person. So thank you everyone uh, for really being with me in this journey, uh, for, for showing me your encouragement, for giving me your encouragement, for showing, for showing up, I guess, in, in, in listening to, to every episode. And if you haven't had a chance to catch up, well, it's there. Um, it's going to be there for, you know, for a while. So whenever you have a moment, go ahead and take a listen. So on today's episode, I also want to talk about Our Lady of Fatima. You know, given that today is the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. And, you know, it's, it's also been uh, another title that, that has you know per, you know that has interested me uh, more so fascinated me because I've heard a lot about Our Lady of Fatima, and I briefly heard about um, you know the the story behind it, and you know I always wanted to really read more on it, but I guess I never got around to doing it. So this is like the perfect opportunity, and. You know, when I did the research, when I went through, you know, various uh, sites to, to really understand the story of what happened, um, you know, those many, many years ago, what I really took back from this episode was about how Mama Mary was so calm, uh, you know, when, when she visited those three children. And she was so calm that even when she appeared to them, they were not afraid. And that tells you how calming and how comforting Mama Mary is. So the story is very interesting because it talks about um, Mary's apparition in a, in a town, um, or rather a village in Portugal called Fatima. And this happened um, you know, on this very day, 104 years ago. So what happened was this occurred over a series, um, you know, a, a series of events happened around this apparition. So on the first day, which was on May 13th, 104 years ago, Mary appeared to these three peasant children, Francisco, Jacinta, and Lucia. And at that time, they were just uh, 10, 9, and 7, respectively. So, you know, they were going about their normal day. They were tending to their sheep. And here's how they described Mary as she appeared to them. But there was a lady all in white, more brilliant than the sun, indescribably beautiful. 
and she was seen standing above a bush. So, you know, as human nature would be, you know, you would, they saw it, they didn't really pay much attention to it. So people started hearing about these apparitions, and so word started spreading, and the children told them what this lady had told them, and where she promised them that God would grant peace to the entire world if her request for prayer, reparation, and consecration were heard and obeyed. So, again, as normal, you had some people who believed in the children, that they had actually seen the Virgin Mary, and then there were other people who ridiculed them and thought that, you know, they were just children, that they were just making it up. So every month that this lady, the Virgin Mary, appeared to the children, she encouraged them and she would end the, con the, uh, the apparition by telling them to say the rosary every day to bring peace to the world and the end of the war that was happening at that time. And this was something that, you know, Mama Mary would do at every apparition that she made until October. So I'm going to go through, um, you know, what she really said in every, uh, from, from May 13th right up till, um, you know, till, till October. What were the different things that happened in each of those months? So on May 13th, when Mary appeared to these three children, she asked them to say the rosary every day to bring peace to the world and to end the war that was at hand. She even asked, um, she even asked the three children whether they are, were willing to offer themselves to God and to bear all the sufferings he wills to send to them as an act of reparation for the conversion of sinners. And as innocent as they all were, they all agreed readily. And then Mary tells them that you are going to have much to suffer, but the grace of God will be your comfort. Now if we, I mean, I don't know if this is, this is even a comparison to make, but if we look at today's world, if we look at what's happening today, what would be your answer if Mary appeared to you today and said, My child, are you willing to offer yourself to God and to bear all the sufferings that he wills to send you as an act of reparation for the conversion of sinners? And at the end, what really, um, you know, takes me aback but not really surprises me because that's how good God is. Mary affirms that when we say yes, and even though we may have to suffer, she tells us that the grace of God will be your comfort. And at the end of that, at that day, she tells these children to say the rosary every day to bring peace to the world and to the end of that war. Even in today's scenario, how many of us pray the rosary every day? We are in the month of May, which is the month of Mary. But despite that, the rosary should be our weapon against the evil one. It should be our weapon to put an end to what's going on right now. Well, let's go to the next month. So in June, Mary appears again to these children. And she reminds them to come again the next month and reminds them to pray the rosary every day. She tells Lucia not to lose heart because she will never forsake her. Because her immaculate heart will be her refuge 
and the way that we lead her to God. So here's another promise that Mary makes to this child. That Mama Mary will never forsake you. That through her immaculate heart we will find that refuge. And through Mama Mary's immaculate heart, she will lead us to God. The following month in July, Mama Mary appears to these three children. Once again, she reminds them to be present the next month and to continue to pray the rosary every day. And to pray, pray the rosary so that there is peace in the world, so that there would be an end of that war. So at this point of time, Lucia asked Mary for a miracle because as word started spreading around about these apparitions, we did have people who, um, you know, ridiculed them. There were people who didn't believe what these children were, were, were telling them. And so Lucia asked Mary for a miracle so that everyone would believe. And so Mama Mary tells her to continue coming every month. And in October, she will reveal who she is and what she wants. And she will perform a miracle for all to see and believe. Now on this same day, Lucia also makes some request for Mary to to cure some people who were sick. To which Mary replied that she would cure some, but not others, and that everyone should say the rosary to obtain the graces that they need throughout the, the year. And again, Mama Mary says, sacrifice yourselves for sinners. And say many times, especially when you make some sacrifice, O oh Jesus, it is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now here's what happened as Mary said that. When Mary said those words and she opened up her hands, there were rays of light that seemed to penetrate the earth, revealing to Lucia a terrifying vision of hell, which was full of demons and lost souls amid indescribable forms. Now the vision of hell was the first part of a three-part secret of Fatima. So this is something that was known where this vision that Lucia had was known as a secret. And here's what Mama Mary had to say about this vision. And I'm going to quote what was mentioned in Sister Lucia's memoir. You have seen hell, where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my immaculate heart. If what I say to you is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. This war is going to end. But if people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out during the pontificate of Pius XI. So this was what Mary had told these three children. And the third part of the secret was not made public until the year 2000 
at the beatification ceremonies of Jacinta and Francisco. And this is because Mary specifically told Lucia not to tell anyone about the secret at that stage. So the following month, in August, Mary once again appeared to these three children. She encouraged them to say the rosary every day. She encouraged them to pray and pray and pray very much to make sacrifices for sinners, for many souls go to hell because there are none to sacrifice themselves and to pray for them. In the following month, in September, by this time, word spread to far lands and large crowds, you know, began to um, converge on Fatima. From every, um, from every corner of the country. And Mary appeared and continued to encourage them to pray the rosary in order to obtain peace and the end of the, war, of the war. And once again, Lucia asked Mary to put forward petitions for cures for those who are sick. October 13th, 1917. So this was the day when the miracle publicly happened, where we had many pilgrims, you know, who walked barefoot. There were some who were reciting the rosary as they went along, and a lot of people crowded the area where these apparitions happened. Now what happened on that day was, by mid-morning, the weather turned really bad and there was a heavy rain that began to fall. So the children, um, you know, they arrived um, and at that moment, Mary appeared again. And Lucia asked Mary what she wanted. And Mary told them that she wanted a chapel to be built in that place in honor of her. And she told them that she was the Lady of the Rosary. And once again, she encouraged them to always pray the Rosary every single day. Now here's another interesting aspect. Once again, Lucia made requests for cures, for conversions and for other things. And Our Lady responds, and I quote from Lucia's memoir. Some yes, but not others. They must amend their lives and ask forgiveness for their sins. And Sister Lucia relates this incident where she says, when Mary says this, she becomes very sad. And she says, do not offend the Lord our God anymore because he is already so much offended. So this brings me also back to, to today. How many of us have asked for forgiveness from God for the things that we may have done, whether it be in our past, whether it may have been, you know, very recently. How many of us are holding anger and guilt within ourselves? How many of us are holding unforgiveness within our lives? Have we asked God to forgive us for all of that? Have we forgiven those who have hurt us? Let's amend our lives, especially now with all this darkness that's going around. We need to be the light to others. We need to be their light so that they know that there is hope. So it was on this day when Mary performed that miracle for everyone to believe. And this miracle is known as the miracle of the sun. So what happened was um, as I mentioned, there was heavy rain that 
you know, that came down into that place. And apparently for three days, there was a downpour. But despite that heavy rain, there were about 70,000 people, I believe, who journeyed through that rain and that mud to this place where Mary appeared to these three children. And what happened then was, as these people walked drenched in the downpour, they say suddenly the clouds separated and the sun appeared between them in that clear blue sky. And it looked like a disk of white fire. The people could even look at the sun without blinking. And while they gazed upward, that huge ball looked to be dancing. And so that huge fireball whirled rapidly, you know, with, with a, with a, you know, with a really, at a really fast pace. And as it was doing that, it sent out brilliant colors. And that reflected on the faces of the crowd. And when the people saw this, you know, the, this, this action of this fiery ball that was going around almost like three times, you know, it just kept whirling. The crowd became very terrified. They became so terrified that they thought that this was the end of the world. Then what happened was the sun, it reversed its course. And it started retracing that zigzag motion that it had. And then it finally returned to its normal place in heaven. And all of this happened in approximately 10 minutes. And the miracle of it all was that all of that, those people who were initially drenched because of the torrential downpour, they realized that their clothes now were perfectly dry. So this is what was known as the miracle of the sun. Now after this miracle happened, the children were grilled and questioned many, many times about what they had seen and what they had been told. But because they were innocent in what they had seen and what they were told, their story never changed. They were questioned about this secret as well. And, you know, the, the, um, the people wanted to know what it was. The authorities wanted to know what it was. And like I said, that secret was, you know, in three parts. Where the first part was about the vision of hell, where the souls of the poor sinners would go. And it contained an urgent plea from Our Lady for acts of prayer and sacrifice to save souls with that emphasis on praying the rosary daily and having a devotion to her immaculate heart. The second part of the secret prophesied the outbreak of World War II and it contained the prediction of the immense damage that Russia would do to humanity by abandoning the Christian faith. And the third, like I mentioned, was only revealed until 2000, the year 2000. Now, how this was revealed was, so the vision that Lucia had was of a bishop clothed in white who prays for all the faithful, and that was the Pope. And as he makes his way with great difficulty toward the cross, amid the corpses of those who were martyred, you know, of bishops or priests, um, religious people, and, and many lay people as well, that this bishop clothed in white would also fall to the ground, apparently dead, under the hail of gunfire. So, it is possible that the vision that they saw predicted the 1981 attack of Pope John Paul II's life. And the Pope has always credited the Virgin for his survival. So this was the story 
of Our Lady of Fatima about how she appeared to these three young children. And the message that she gave to them was to continue to pray the rosary, to make sacrifices for sinners so that their souls do not perish in hell. And one thing that Mary told them, and again I want to quote this, where she says, When you pray the rosary, say after each mystery, O oh my Jesus, forgive us, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need. And this is something that even till today we say after every decade. And so it is from this apparition that that Fatima prayer is mentioned at the end of every decade. So on May 13th, 2017, during the 100th anniversary celebration at Fatima, Pope Francis canonized Jacinta and Francisco, and they are considered the youngest non-martyred saints declared in the history of the church. And I think the one thing to really take back from this story is the message that Mary had for these children and for the world at that time, which I honestly believe is, is a message that could also be for us at this time, at this moment, where we're all going through this horrible pandemic. You know, just the other day I was talking to some of my colleagues about how you know, we we went through um, the Gulf War. And this is like another war that we're fighting with this pandemic. Where we're losing a lot of people. We're losing a lot of good people. But through this story of Our Lady of Fatima, Mama Mary gives us that hope. That hope that God is our comfort that she is our refuge, that she will not abandon us, that she will not forsake us. But all we need to do is just pray the rosary every day, consecrate our lives to her immaculate heart, to offer sacrifices for those for sinners, so that the end of this pandemic, the end of this war, that we are facing today may come to an end. And so I leave you with this quote by Saint Louis Marie de Montfort. Mary is the safest, shortest, easiest, and most perfect way of approaching Jesus. Lean on her, intercede through her, and draw yourself closer to Jesus, who is the only one who can give you that true peace, that true comfort. So I really want to thank you for tuning in for this special episode in celebrating two months of my podcast and also in celebrating the feast of Our Lady of Fatima today. So don't forget, I will be putting out um, that image and I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts and your comments on those three questions. So thank you once again for joining me in this episode of The Listful Soul, A Devotion to Mary. If you enjoyed this podcast or even if you wish to send along a question or have a friendly critique, you know, send me an email at listfulsoulpodcast at gmail.com. If you haven't yet followed me on Facebook or Instagram, go ahead and follow me there. The music in the introduction and the close of this podcast was composed by Garrett DeMello, and the artwork in my podcast logo and episode 
was designed by Anahita Ray and Michelle Fernandez, respectively. You can check them out on their social media handles mentioned below. Do spread the word of my podcast via your social media handles, and let's bring more souls closer to him. See you on the next episode. Until then, stay blessed and stay safe. Oh,